Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. All right, water is wet, the sky is blue, and DJ is inconsistent. We know that. And I'm going to show you some plays where Daniel Jones did some good things and did some bad things. And ultimately, that is the story of his career. He does good things. He does bad things. And at the end of the day, it's not enough to win football games. So let's get straight to it. Darius Slayton here is going to run this deep, uh, this deep end or not a deep end, but sort of a, a, a deep over or, or, or kind of deep post. But essentially, he's going to turn this into what looks like a seam route. Going to go straight up field. And Malik Neighbors is also going to be open. So something you'll notice here is the Steelers played this game. Uh, they, they say we're going to get up in people's face. We're going to play a lot of cover two. We're going to crowd the first down marker and come up and make tackles. And we're going to dare the quarterback to throw it deep. And Daniel Jones said, you're going to dare me to throw it deep? Well, I'll throw it deep. So that part worked out well for us, but it wasn't enough to win the football game. So take a look. Malik Neighbors and Darius Slayton are going to be wide open, but this is going to go to Slay. So take a look at Slay here at the bottom of your screen. He's going to break open and puts it, puts it right on him. Put it right on him. Now, people can make an argument that Daniel Jones, if he throws this with anticipation, if he puts it, you know, right here, because Slay is pretty open right here. If he puts it like right here, Slay might be able to catch that and, and run into the end zone. But let's be real, it's Daniel Jones. And this isn't a bad throw. It's not a bad throw. Have you ever known Daniel Jones to, to hit a throw where he throws with anticipation, where the guy's right here and he lets it go? And it's a guy that's driving for a touchdown, let's be real. But like I said, at the end of the day, this isn't a bad throw. He did hit him, was accurate, and, you know, nice chunk play, which is what you need to win football games, which is what kept us in the game. Here we go. So we have a window for Daniel Jones to throw the ball to right here. And he's late. He's late. And he puts his wide receiver in danger. And it's just all around a bad throw. You're late and it's high. That usually is a key to disaster, whether it's an injury or an interception. This time, they're able to avoid both, but very risky decision here from Daniel Jones for Darius Slayton's help. So you see Slay is open right there, and the ball is too high. I mean, what's going on here? The ball is just way too high. All right, so here we got man coverage across the board. 41 is going to pick up the tight end. Uh, you got man here. You got him playing robber right here. And you got the deep safety here. So you got basically cover one robber. Uh, you can call it a couple of things. But I'm going to call it cover one robber because you got a man in the middle of the field. You got a deep safety. And you got man coverage across the board. Right here, DJ, I'm going to show you three plays of Darius Slayton essentially running the same route. Now, it's different coverages, but essentially Darius Slayton's running the same route. And we get three different results. So first time, here we go. Slay's there, anticipation, throw, catch, yak, big play. Not just a big play, but a huge play because he's hit in stride because Daniel Jones lets this ball go now before he's even open. The ball is out. And that's how it always should be. So that's play one. All right, so on this play, you just basically have a fancy cover three. These are your three deep guys. The rest of the folks are right here in the middle of the field. And again, the Steelers were really daring Daniel Jones to throw it outside the numbers down the field. Now, there were a lot more opportunities than Daniel Jones took, but this is another opportunity where we're going to get the same route that we got last time from Darius Slayton, and we get a different result. We get a different result. So take a look here at Slay at the top of your screen. The ball should be out right here. The ball should be thrown right here. That way, Darius Slayton gets hit in stride, but guess what? Not only does he not throw it with anticipation, he throws it behind the receiver and he throws it too high again. Now take a look at your quarterback. He's getting hit as he throws, but guess what? Look at this. The ball is out. The ball is out. So you got hit after you threw it, but it did not affect the throw if you're getting my drift. He wasn't able to step into it, but he's got a nice base right there. I mean, he's got a decent base. He does step into it, actually. So what am I talking about? He does step into it. It's just inaccurate. He panics with, with the pressure in his face, and the throw is too high. And, I mean, honestly, this could have been an interception here by the, by the corner. 
if Slay doesn't break this up, and it could be popped into the air, and I mean, who knows what can happen. So that's the same route twice. Now let's, let's look at it one more time. All right, so we got cover one the first time. The second time we got cover three. This route coming again. And this time this is cover two. So you got essentially a mob of guys in the middle of the field, Darren Daniel Jones, to throw it deep. They don't really care about him throwing it deep because they don't think that he's going to beat them that way. And they're, they're ready to pounce on those underneath throws. So Slay is running another uh, deep end. And let's take a look. You got two safeties deep. Everything's there. And the ball should be out here again. The ball should be already out of his hands. Slay should be catching the ball right here. He should be catching the ball right here. And he should be able to catch this, run up field, and be all, you know, one-on-one -on -one with a safety. But the ball is late. He waits until he sees Slay this open before he throws it. And he has to throw it behind him. Because if he doesn't throw it behind him, and luckily Slay was able to catch that, nice catch. But if he doesn't throw it behind him, you got a safety that's going to crash down. And, and he's probably going to pick six this. <laughs> I mean, he's got a blocker right there. He's got another man there. So he's probably going to pick six this if he throws this uh, inside more. So he had to throw it behind him. I heard, um, I think it was Joe Buck or Troy Aikman on the, the broadcast say he needs to throw it out in front of him more. But if he does it at this point, I mean, it's, it's, getting, it's getting intercepted because you got the safety coming right underneath. But if he throws it in front of him with anticipation right here, you got a big play. But nonetheless, nice chunk play, but it could have been a lot better if, it, if the ball is thrown on time. So I've seen this play a couple times, and I wanted to give Daniel Jones props for throwing this short pass because he's under pressure and he's able to at least save us from disaster. But take a look at Darius Slayton at the bottom of your screen and just take a look. Let's watch this in real time to see how quickly the pressure gets there. I really believe that a guy like CJ Stroud, a, a guy just with, with arm talent where they're able to, they don't have to be completely set to throw the football. I believe they can hit Darius Slayton right here on this crosser. I really believe that they can hit him. And I see that Daniel Jones notices him, but he's not able to set his feet right there. And he's got instant pressure. And he's going to get obliterated. So because he's not able to make that throw fine, at least he knows that he can't physically make that throw. At least he knows he can't physically make that throw. So he does the next best thing, which is get rid of it as he's getting hit. And that way, Tracy's able to make something happen with it. And I really enjoy this because... This is something that we didn't see from Daniel Jones. Under pressure, off balance, being able to make a throw just to save us, get up some yards, and, and let us play the next down. So, again, instant pressure, getting rid of it. Good stuff overall. But, again, you know, going with it with, with going through it with a fine-tooth comb, <laughs> I think he could have possibly hit Darius Slayton here if he's a guy that's able to really drop back and at the bottom of his drop be able to hit Darius Slayton on that crosser. So here we got another hole shot here from Malik Neighbors, and this is a ball that should have been thrown. Again, this is a ball that should have been thrown. We got another missed opportunity because people love to talk about you. You're harping on one play from Daniel Jones that real, like, we're not harping on one or two plays. We're harping on a couple of plays. <laughs> How about six or seven plays? But essentially, Neighbors is going to get open almost instantly and the ball should be there. It should be on him. It should be there. Not only should it be thrown there, it, the, the best time to do something when you, when you missed out on it is to do it now. Well, he still doesn't do it now. And he throws it short there. And Malik Neighbors was open the majority of the play. And again, the dream for Malik Neighbors when he was drafted is to get him in the open field with the safety. Malik Neighbors one-on-one -on -one with the safety. You... You believe in Malik Neighbors much more than you believe in that safety's chance of tackling him in the open field. And again, it's just sad that he doesn't have the football in his hands right here. And we end up checking the ball down. So this play is just, it's just really unfortunate all around. Malik Neighbors is going to get the outside release. And we get what I believe is the right throw from Daniel Jones. It's just Malik Neighbors is interfered with. So take a look at him at the bottom of your screen. Nice release. And he gets grabbed. Just grabbed up. And that should have been a walk-in touchdown. Should have been a walk-in touchdown. But Joey Porter, 
and I'll stop it this time since you saw it. Joey Porter here is grabbing. He's grabbing. He's grabbing. And it's not a touchdown because there was pass interference that wasn't called. Referee is pretending like he didn't see it. I got a bunch of angry Steelers fans in my comments that said there were bad calls on both sides. Uh, not like this. There were, were any bad calls called on the Steelers that took points off the board? I don't think so. Another missed opportunity. Again, you got one safety deep. You got Malik Neighbors on a slot fade. This is his bread and butter. And this safety is so concerned with the eye candy of, of Wando Robinson. And Daniel Jones always throwing it short on third down. and He's always throwing it short. So this safety is, is really convinced that I just need to crash down and make the tackle. Because he's going to throw it to the sticks. So nice job by Daniel Jones to change the tendency and take this deep shot one-on-one -on -one with Malik Neighbors. Watch the slot fade here from Neighbors. He's one-on-one. -on -one. This could be a play he makes. The ball is there. He just can't get his feet down. Just unfortunate. So take a look from this angle. The ball was not really placed bad. It, it wasn't placed in a bad area. The ball is placed exactly where you want it. If Malik Neighbors' momentum carries him a little bit more inside, this is a touchdown. It's just that simple. The ball was placed in a, in a great spot. It's just, I mean, bad luck, to be honest with you. So here on this next play, you're having a great drive. This just cannot happen. You're down in the red zone in the fourth quarter, ready to tie the football game, and this happens. I mean, this cannot happen. You cannot put the ball on the turf here. So take a look here. Uh, Dable says that Daniel Jones was supposed to motion Theo Johnson over to here to help with uh, TJ Watt. I don't know. I, I just kind of, that story doesn't make sense to me because you have Singletary right here. What are you trying to protect Singletary? I don't get it. Um, I guess they were looking out for a linebacker blitz in the middle of the line, but you got TJ Watt one-on-one -on -one with Jermaine Illuminor, who's played well for us, who played really well for most of the season, but he's going against the best player on the field. The best player on the field, only player on either field that you could say is as good as TJ Watt is, De is Dexter Lawrence. And I don't see him on the field right now. So you're not going to give TJ Watt any more attention, but you're going to double Highsmith. And you know what I'm saying? You're, you're going to leave Highsmith one-on-one -on -one with the guy who has not blocked him one time I just It just doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't make sense. I think the biggest issue was that Devin Singletary was supposed to chip TJ Watt, and he didn't. Or maybe he was supposed to step across and chip Highsmith. But what made sense to me is he chips TJ, he chips Highsmith. You're great. No problem. Either way, we don't get TJ Watt blocked, and we get a sack fumble. And nonetheless, Daniel Jones has got... I mean, he's he, he's got to, to he's got to hold on to the football. It's just that simple. And he's he's dropping it back to throw here, and the ball is just out. So that last play wasn't good, but it wasn't egregious. It wasn't a horrible fumble. You know, sometimes they happen. It just it just it just is what it is there. But on this play, we're we're back. We're driving down the field again to try to get in the field goal range, or not field goal range, but to try to get into the end zone and get, you know, get six points back on the board and try to go for a two point conversion and all of that. But essentially you got the tight end who's going to run the seam here and you get a top level, top shelf throw from Daniel Jones down the seam, beating this cover two. Watch Theo Johnson split the safeties behind the linebacker. Looks like they're running that uh, deep cover two. And <laughs> I mean, exactly where you want this ball to be placed this is exactly where you want this ball to be placed and i mean you're in business here and why don't we see this consistently we don't see the tight end team consistently we just don't get it but daniel jones throws a beautiful pass here and after that throw and some nice throws to malik neighbors this is game time you're gonna have two open men in the open field and we get an interception because Daniel Jones panics with the football. So he's he's got late pressure coming here. It's not instant pressure. It's late pressure. And I'm a believer of you. if you have delayed pressure coming, you should be able to escape that. You should be able to escape that. 
You got the late pressure here. Step to the side. Just step to the side. Roll out. Roll out. Run. You know, throw it to Singletary on, on the run. Throw it to Malik Neighbors acro across the field. Do whatever. Throw the ball away. But there's no reason. No reason at all for him to just panic, fade away, and overthrow the check down. There's no reason for that. There's no reason for him to be fading away when there's an avenue to roll out. And there's no reason for you to be this inaccurate on the check down. I understand you're off balance, but you play quarterback. I mean, why can't he throw the ball unless his feet are perfectly set and aligned to where he's throwing it? That's just not sustainable in the NFL. It's just not sustainable. So when the Giants needed the most, he fumbled and he threw an interception. It, it, it's really been the story of his career. He's had some bad teams around him. He's had some bad situations. But in games that we lost, the majority of the time, they've been because Daniel Jones messed this one play up or messed these three plays up. And when you take a look at the tape, you see that there were a lot more opportunities to be had. But with two men in the open field, he ends up turning this over. And again, you know, it just, it just is what it is there. This is definitely his last year as a Giants starter. Hopefully he can turn this around and we can get some more watchable football. I think we had some nice plays this past week. So let's keep it entertaining. Let's keep the plays coming. But I just don't think he's a quarterback that's going to allow these things to be translated to consistent scoring and wins. So let me know what you're thinking of Daniel Jones as a New York Giants quarterback right now. And stay tuned for more film sessions coming soon.